What happens when an immovable object meets a light source? This week I want to explore object source lighting. That's when a model has an object like a lamp or a glow stick that casts a light source onto itself, kind of like how if me holding this light casts light onto me. It's up to us to paint in the effect that that light would have on the model. And so that's what we're going to do this week. And although it is a bit of an advanced technique, I'm only really going to cover the basics. So I want everyone to be able to try this on something they have. The model I'll be using for this video is a Battle Sisters Psychic from One Page Rules. While she's not holding any objects to create a light source, I wanted to show that the model need not have anything special to use these kind of effects as it can be all about magical lighting, like between her hands, or environmental lighting. So this video will be more about showing off the process behind a couple of versions of OSL, without getting too technical about the theory behind it. That will be for another time. To prepare for the object source lighting, I'd like to get the model to the point they'd look like without it first. So I'll do a quick breakdown of how I got to that point. I'm going for a red armor, so I'm starting with a base coat of a dark green. For speed's sake, I'm going to use my airbrush, but it would be an easy color to brush on evenly as well. After that, I use a light pink to do some xenophil highlighting from my airbrush as well. In previous videos, I've discovered that for a red, a dark green base with a pink highlight undercoat can give some very good results for a red overcoat. If you don't have an airbrush, just some edge highlighting and feathering along edges would work as well, as even after my xenophil here, I do some edge highlighting, but that's because this armor has a lot of those edges that just need that separation. For the overcoat, I could use my airbrush for a solid layer of red, but for this particular red pigment, I find it works best by applying it by brush. But if you do have a more fluid red than mine, and have been following with the airbrush so far, by all means use it to get this top coat done. For the fabric parts, I start with a base coat of a desaturated blue, so a mix of black and white and some phthalo blue. It's quite opaque, so it goes on in one smooth coat. I then wanted to try something of a wash, but with a new medium I found, just to try it out and see how it feels. I just did an overall wash and let it pool in the recesses. As it was a blue and black mix, it did feel a bit like a watered down contrast paint to me, since those are opaque colors, but it went on all right and dried a little darker than what it looked like going on. Instead of just layering the base layer back over, I decided to try a heavy stippling instead, using a brush that doesn't like to keep a point to make it go a bit easily, just picking out where I think the lighter areas would be. It was a bit rough at this point, so figured I'd do some glazing to smooth it out, thinning out the paint with a bit more medium and water, and using my brush to pull the paint in towards the areas I stippled the heaviest. The next two layers were pretty much the same thing, with a bit more white added, stippling the first layer to pick out where I wanted the highlights, then glazing to soften that transition out a bit. This is where I ended up stopping for now though with these colors, so I don't get too bright before doing the actual lighting. The pink I did over the green earlier, I used a skin tone, so being the lazy sort, I'm going to use that skin tone for the face as well. But since the blue's already there too, I'm going to mix that in to get a sort of purple. This should give me a shadowy base to layer up from, as well as go on a bit easier over the dark mess that's currently covering her face. Though even then it takes two coats to make look nice. From there it's just some layering, starting with the raw pink I got out of the bottle, using this to layer up on the middle of the head and around the cable she's got there, along the eyebrows and cheeks, as well as picking out the nose and lips. I add a bit more white and layer up a bit more from there, just taking it one more step up in brightness to get me to a pretty good basic face. I also dot the eyes at this point, as they will be important for later, just dotting the middle of them with a touch of white. For some final touch-ups, I repaint the cables on her head from the start, which means bringing back that dark green and giving it a very careful base coat, trying to pick out the line where her head and these things meet. I also add this green to the pipe that travels around her neck and any of the corrugated under armor that shows through. I add pink next, but in this case only to the nodules at the tips of these cables, as I want the cables themselves to stay green so they'll match the pipe and leg when I do them in a bit. Then just cover those in red, not really much different than what I did for the base red at the start. 
For the green, I add a tiny amount of white and just layer that onto the cables with the side of my brush. I don't want this getting too bright as I don't really want any of these parts to stick out and pull attention to themselves. Now that I've got two mostly identical base coats, it's time to make things glow as it were, starting with just a basic color glow by pretending she's projecting light from her hands and fingers. To start, I really want to push the highlighting now in the areas that are going to be glowing. So using the red still, I add a bit of this light yellow. I don't want it to turn pink with white, so this yellow will instead push it more towards orange. The glow point is going to be your hands, so I want to start with those, layering in highlights with this orange, but leaving some of the deep recesses still. Now that I've got my point light, I have to decide how far it's going to go. Light has a fall off, meaning that as you get further from the source, the light needs to fade. Since this is only the first stage of highlighting, I say we can take this pretty far. So I'll layer this over her inner arms, a little further down the gloves, her chest, stomach, and belly, and I think just the tips of the leg plates here is where I want the cutoff to be. Since the top of the sash gets into the lit area, I'll need to lighten it up a bit as well, using its colors to do so, which was black, white, and blue. Just a little bit near the belt though, so not too much on this one. I add a bit more of the yellow to the mix now and continue to layer, always starting with the light source, making sure that it'll always be the lightest point. This is the same as the last layers, so I won't show off too much, but I make sure that the further away I get from the hands, the less of this layer I put. So you might be wondering at this point, where's the other color? Well that comes in now. I think a nice light blue would make for a good psychic feel. I start with a neutral blue, so something not too dark or too light, and a bit of ink for staining. I want to glaze the now lighter parts of her hands and plates that I layered on top of before. Since this is to make the color change, it can actually go a bit further past where I highlighted the red, blending between the lit and unlit areas by giving the dark areas some color, but not really lighting it. Remember when I said the eyes would be important? I'm planning on giving them a nice glow as well. So with that same blue I just used on everything else, I'm going to use it on the eyes as well. Letting that glow get down around the cheeks and over the eyebrows. And while light wouldn't naturally loop around eyebrows and hit the forehead, this is instead a stylistic glow. So it'll look cool while not exactly following real life. From here it becomes a game of layer and blend until you're happy. Now that I'm into the blue, I just follow up with more blue, adding just a bit of white each time. Always starting with the hands and adding the lighter layers in the middle of any of the bumps as the idea behind glows like this are that thicker parts will glow harder or something like that. Then once the hand is done, I start to focus more on the edges of the armor it would light up. So only hitting the edges and letting it flow out from there if I feel like the light would hit it from that angle. Like on the leg here that's getting hit by both hands from two different angles. So for the eyes, this time it's just the upper cheeks and lower brows. It's okay if around the eye stays a bit dark, as it's natural for light sourced from the eyeball itself to still allow the sunken parts to remain dark. A little more white and another coat. Once again, getting the hands fully, for the most part, but really focusing only on the edges the further up the arm I go. This will be the last highlight for a lot of this as it's starting to get much further away from the light source, but we'll still have a few more layers for the hands and surrounding area. One more for the eyes as well, just a line along the top of the cheek and the edge of the brow should do. So now that everything has a healthy glow to it, it's time to make the light source really shine. So while I'm going to be pushing this towards white, I don't think I'll take this to a perfect white. Just getting the hand and focusing on the rounded parts of the knuckles and fingers, I do let this light reflect a little off the sharp edges right next to the hands as well, to give them the feel that they're close to that intense light. At this point, I felt like some of that under layer of red was showing through the gloves a bit too much. So my fix for that was to take the first blue glaze that I started with and apply it in a bit of a wash consistency. So it'd settle in those deep recesses, but also blend the highlight I did the last step a bit better. Since I did that wash, I don't add any more white this time and just do another layering of the highlight color I already had to pick out the knuckles and fingers. Then once this is dry fully, I'll determine if I should keep going or if I feel like she's giving off the right amount of power. At this point, I slept on it so I could look on it with fresh eyes and decided one more lighter shade couldn't hurt, so added some of the last mix into a thinned white to pick out the highest finger and knuckle details. I did the rivets around her armor just to finish the model off, 
I think the glow actually turned out a bit more purple than I imagined it would. Because I wanted the blue glaze to be more transparent at the start, I used an ultramarine blue instead of a thalo blue. However, I quite like it, as purple is even closer to red as a harmonious color than blue is. There's lots of different ways to style object source lighting. Sometimes all it could take is a single glaze to give the effect while others like to really turn up the intensity and have large areas of white. Mine's a bit of an in-between here, but that's mostly because I don't like the look of those super bright OSLs. But if you do, all it takes is a few more layers and a few more dabs of white into the mix. Now to turn it around a bit. What if what you want is a white light, like the kind we all use to light our miniatures with when we're painting them? Well, that's what this second model is for, starting with making her fingers light up. I won't do the whole fists, but just the fingertips this time, but use the same yellow and red that I did for the first OSL, layering up until the glow of those fingers is a pure light yellow. And once that's done, it's time to start the real journey. What I mean by that is, I've never actually done this before. In order to get a white light, that means it has to essentially make everything around it glow their natural colors. Well, since they're already painted in their natural colors, that means instead we have to turn the rest of her to night. So I'm going to apply a nighttime filter by using my airbrush. I'm loading it with a dark ultramarine blue and some blue ink and some medium so that I can get a transparent blue, but also have it go on quite heavy. That's my hope anyway. I'll start with her feet just to make sure it works. Time for a big breath. Whew. It actually goes on smoothly and transparent like I was hoping. Now I can layer this up a bit over the whole back of the model, leaving a circle around where I think her fingers will light up the rest of her. I let that dry for a while as I was worried about it being glossy due to the ink and, well, the gloss I saw. But I needn't worry, it just needed time to dry. So for the next layer, I'm adding a bit of a green gray into the mix, which is like a really dark teal, which if I didn't have, I'd just use black. And this time, with the airbrush, I focus on the deeper, more shadowy areas of the shadow side, if that makes sense, trying to darken up even further the places that would get the least amount of light from the light source, as well as the environment. This is looking far better than I expected, and is actually quite simple. So I'm not going to jinx myself by doing too much again, and just have one more layer to go. Either a pure green gray, which for me is a really, really dark green sided teal pretty much, or just even more black added if you don't have something like that. And this one, it's all the darkest shadows behind the legs and undercloth, where the backpack would cast shadow and further in behind her head, that kind of thing. And I do a few passes of this as I kind of want this color to be more solid in those shadows. This was a really interesting effect. And while I think I can give a little more to it, with just three shades from an airbrush, it was really easy to do. I can kind of understand why I've never tried this before though, as just as an idea even, I'd be recoding about 66% of my previous work to get this effect, which means if I got it wrong, it was a lot of work down the drain. But in this case, I think it worked. And since I already painted one that worked out well, this wasn't a big risk to do. But I'll certainly want to be doing this again, especially if it's on a sculpt that it makes more sense on. Please subscribe if you'd like to see more videos like this one, or just other fun things to do with painting miniatures. And until next time, enjoy your own painting journey.